Okay, this is Daniel Bär. I am responsible for the loudspeaker development at Fraunhofer IDMT. So here it's our new technology. It's a planar speaker. It's very thin, 2.5 centimeters in thickness. And how you can see, it consists of an array of many micro speakers. <laughs> our aim, our target was to get the acoustic potential, the acoustic sound quality from a standard loudspeaker into a very thin loudspeaker like we have it here. How it is possible? At first we have to move air. All the time to create sound pressure we have to move air. So and that we can do by a big woofer or we can do it by a lot of small drivers. So that here the basic principle is to use many micro speakers to move the same air volume like it is done by one single woofer. And now a second important thing is all these drivers have to play together like in an orchestra the single musicians has to play together so that at the end it's a very nice sound. And here it's also so that the arrangement of these single drivers is well designed so that every driver is playing together with its neighbor. And so at the end we reach a sound quality that starts at 100 Hz minus 6 dB and goes up to 20 kHz so that we can provide a standard speaker, bookshelf speaker sound quality and if you want to use it for home cinema you would add a subwoofer for the content below 100 Hz. Okay, a couple of questions. Yes. How does it work? For example, is each speaker addressed individually? It's so that not each speaker is addressed individually. It's so that we have separated the array that you can see here into sub-arrays. So that a part of the speaker is responsible for the reproduction of the low frequency range and another part is responsible for the reproduction of the high frequency range. And the Separation is done by a crossover, so that we have here inside a crossover realized by a DSP, multi-channel DSP, and the amplification by class D amps, so that it's also possible to have everything in this small enclosure. And speaking of enclosures, a box, an enclosure for a speaker cabinet usually has a lot of effect on the sound right. quality. It's so right. you have no enclosure here, so how, how does this work? It's right. It's so, it's, it looks like that we have no enclosure, but it's so, after every single membrane we have a small enclosure. Means the enclosure is given only by the hole behind. So it's, I think, 10 centi cubic, uh, 10 cubic centimeters in, 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 in size. So that is enough for every single driver that it works optimal. So here we have this case that it's not needed a big volume behind because of this special driver. If you use maybe a standard driver it would need a very large enclosure volume behind so it wouldn't be able to build it such flat so in effect, you've got lots of tiny enclosures, one right. for each speaker. Right, so for each speaker, every is separated here. And that is it's also needed because every single driver has to perform without interaction yes, from the enclosure part from the back with his neighbor. In the front, they have to, uh, uh, they have to couple each other so that they can play together and build the whole acoustic performance. But from the back, they don't have to interact with each other. And you know, if you have such small enclosure volume, there's a high pressure inside. And if then you have a connection between both sides, both drivers, then it would, by a small difference in movement, it would totally different from the interaction than if you have a connection here. And so now we have a total separated, each driver has its own enclosure and therefore there is no bad interaction by, from, from the back of the membranes. Are the enclosures totally sealed? Totally sealed. It's totally sealed, but 
also for this small enclosure, if you think about the first speakers, there you had, you had really large enclosures because the volume inside the enclosure, it's, it's acting like a an, like an force against the movement of the membrane. So think about the, the wheel pump, the air pump for the wheels and so on for a bicycle and close the hole of the vent hill and try to pump. You, you get a feeling about the power that it's coming from a sealed enclosure volume and is acting against the movement of the membrane. And we have the same here. And therefore, the power of each driver has to be very large so that we feed a lot of electrical energy inside that the membrane movement is, in spite of the enclosure, the small enclosure and the air volume side is very well performing for the movement to create enough sound pressure level. So what if you were to have a small port at the back of each enclosure? Yeah, so that means... a ported enclosure. That, that would be a vented system then. Yeah. Yeah. For a vented system, the, it could also work as a vented system. But the vented system has on the one hand the advantage that you say, okay, I can increase my generating of sound in a low frequency range by coupling a resonator. That means I get maybe one octave, maybe a little bit more extension in low frequency. But below that resonator range, I have the problem that there the membrane movement is a lot, it's very large, and then I have the risk that the voice coil is attaching the back plate of the magnet of the uh, circuit, and so again, can get problems with broken whatever inside. And therefore, for us, it's here better to use an enclosure that is sealed totally. I can force the membrane to make this excursion also in a low frequency range by feeding a lot of electrical power in. in and I have not the problem that at lower frequencies, I have no control of that. So that is the difference between using a vented system and a sealed system. Sealed system, all the time I have the control. Vented system, I get a benefit of a resonator. But below the resonator, the tuning range, I have the problem, I have no control any longer. I need there maybe a high-pass filter or whatever so that I can get out the, this very large excursion range. But all the time there's a problem. So since it's a sealed system, what kind of power levels do you need to drive a yeah. speaker this size? Here that's so we have two times 150 watts means for the tweeter range, 150 watts electrical power, for the woofer range, 150 watts electrical power. So that is related to that point where I said, okay, we drive it in the low frequency range with a very large power. And therefore the, the electrical power is needed, the 150 uh, watts in woofer range, but also in the tweeter range. So to drive it enough. But with class D amps now, no problem. No problem, yes. It's, it's, that therefore, it's possible. For the class D amp here, we have only the back plate of this enclosure to uh, handle the heat problem here. Because of the high efficiency, the heat is not that large as for other class amplifier principles. And therefore, it's enough to use only the back plate made of aluminium to have enough cooling. And so it enables things like this, which is, it looks like a normal room. But there are some hidden speakers. Yes. Yeah, that is possible then, to install it like paintings on a wall. Or maybe if you have there some furniture, to integrate the speaker into the wall of a furniture and so on. and that offers you the possibility to have a multi-channel system, to have the right arrangement for the loudspeakers and also to have whatever furniture or other things in your room at the same place, at the same position. That's a great idea. Well, thanks very much for showing us. Okay, you're welcome. Bye-bye.